Hi there, to the viewers. It is December 9th, 2022. You're welcome to Prime News on my media prime television. I am Sama Eileen for presentation. We begin the news in the littoral region where the Douala Five Council has signed a convention with Lochin de Foyer Saint Nicodem aimed at providing assistance to the underprivileged persons in the society. The convention signing was done on Tuesday, December 20, 2022 at the Douala Five Council. Get more in this report with Naivona. Assisting the vulnerable population, the homeless and less privileged persons in the society, were the central objectives of the convention signed between delegates of Le Chien de Foyer Saint Nicodem CFSN and the Douala Five Council in the littoral region of Cameroon. Afin qu'on puisse apporter un soutien conséquent. For us to be able to help families and children living with disability in our communities, the families are highly honored in this partnership. It is for the population and particularly each family living with a disabled child in Douala 5 and for the general interest of all in Douala. Cinquième et pour l'intérêt de tous dans la ville de Douala. The convention signing took place December 8, 2022 at the Esplanade of the Douala 5 Council under the auspices of the Mayor of Douala 5 Council. Je voudrais, au nom de Monsieur le Maire qui... We are so delighted to be part of this ceremony of signing this convention, which is a partnership between our council and the CSFN to cater and guard the vulnerable population of our community. These vulnerable people constitute a major part of our action in the social welfare. Reasons why we had to engage such a convention with a like-minded institution that cater for vulnerable people as well as street children. The need to promote inclusive participation in the society topped a discussion at the signing ceremony. This convention comes in as a continuation to what the Council is doing already, and we want to assure the population that their voice has finally been heard by the Douala Five Council. The humanitarian gesture was also embraced as a way of combating insecurity amongst the less privileged, considering their exposure and vulnerability. All of this is another way of fighting against insecurity. I believe if all of our youths who have been abandoned to themselves in the streets are well mentored, they will leave the streets. And that's the objective we have been assigned to accomplish via this convention. The convention ended with both parties pledging to prioritize the well-being of the people and enhancing an inclusive participatory development in the society. As the 16 days activism against gender-based violence wraps up, we take a look at the works of the Bindunlem Foundation for Peace and Hope in the Northwest region of Cameroon, where women empowerment and emancipation have been the focal point. Darling Gonde completes that story. One more day to the end of the 16 days of activism against gender-based violence, the Bindumlem Humanitarian Foundation for Peace and Hope, BHAF, alongside partners through their organization of this local AGEM and Bororo women in the northwest region of Cameroon, have been able to transform mindsets, and this is the result. Community. 
Empowering the women with arts and crafts has also seen the exhibition of self-made products as cakes, donuts, coated peanuts, watermelon, Irish potatoes, as well as the weaving of traditional regalias. Our mama began a Now, in order to be able to engage the entire community, government, traditional leaders and stakeholders in unanimously saying no to GBV, the women, through the display of diverse choral singing and dancing, have proven their aptitude in spreading the good news far across. It's a sign of love. We thank you and pray God bless you. For our sponsors, UNHCR, thank you. We will never forget you. The next generation will enjoy from this our training. God bless you. Meantime, GBV in Cameroon remains an underestimated gem in most homes and communities, yet claiming lives almost every day. Thus, since November ending, the message of no to GBV will continue echoing in strong terms till the 10th day of December this year. Reason why the Biha Foundation and partners have taken the lead. Let's stay in the Northwest region where 26 year old Mekom Tale Samuel has been elected president of the Northwest Bureau of the Cameroon National Youth Council after being elected by some youths from the seven divisions that make the Northwest region. He pledged to actively participate in peace building and to curb the rate of unemployment in the region. Details with Charles Kebwa. In an elective assembly December 7, 2022 in Bamenda with 43 delegates from seven divisions in the region that make up the electoral college out of which 39 cast their lots with two votes disqualified and one empty ballot, 26 years old entrepreneur Mekom Samuel Tali, who happened to be the youngest in the Bamenda City Council board and pastor was elected Northwest Bureau President of the Cameroon Youth Council. Talking to the press shortly after his victory said, his first plan of action will be to visit the seven divisions, get the aspirations of the youths and design a plan of action based on the identified needs of the youths. We are going to make sure everything that the youths want in this region, they are, they are going to receive. No matter what is there, if you notice in my bureau, we, are, we have visitating all over the region. All over the region, it entails that all these delegates who are part of the bureau, we have to set up a plan of action that will incorporate all the regional uh, plan of action that has the desire to maintain and also to take into consideration all the communal, the divisional uh, level. Mekom Samuel, who holds a DPEP 2 in information and communication technology, takes over command from Nche Betan. He said, We are going to make sure the rate of un unemployment will reduce drastically. We are going to come up with a plan of action that every uh, youth will be able to have what they desire, will be able to, to feel what they actually have passion for. We will empower them to make sure that whatsoever thing they want, they are going to get it. Two other delegates, Malvin Songwe and Asanga Delphine, to represent the region at national level were also elected in strict respect of the laws governing the Youth Council. Those all in the presence of the Secretary General at the Northwest Governor's Office, Northwest Regional Delegate of Youth Affairs and Civic Education, cautioned the candidates after declaration of results to live up to expectations of the youths and help curb unemployment and juvenile delinquents see amongst youths and bring peace to the region. 
Charles Kebwa reporting there. Now, civil status registrars in the far north region of Cameroon are brainstorming effective solutions to boost low registration rates in the region. They took part in a workshop organized by UNICEF and the Ministry of Decentralization and Local Development in Marwa. This was to strategize on how to bring parents back to civil status registration. Let's get details in this report done for us by Joinga. The Cameroonian government, via the Ministry of Decentralization and Local Development and UNICEF, is making efforts to boost the establishment of birth certificate in the far north region. Going by the 2018 demographic statistics, only 45% of children under the age of 5 have been registered in the region. We are here under the invitation of the Ministry of Decentralization and Local Development and the Technical and Financial Department of UNICEF, who gave us the opportunity to discuss with civil status registrars of the Far North region on the recommendations to improve the issuing of birth certificate in this region. We have come up with action plans to be put in place in the follow-up of these recommendations. Mayors of the Far North region and other stakeholders are expected to propose solutions to the birth certificate problem. The Kayele Council benefit finances from civil status remunerations, which is helping us to issue birth certificates in the community. This workshop is coming to reinforce the capacities and it will help us to better assist communities to establish birth certificates. Opportunity which must be seized by all civil status registrars to whom the Secretary General at the Far North Governor's Office demand their full involvement in ensuring that all children have their birth certificates, this for their integration into social, political and economic life. Now on to our feature page. Uh, the end of year is a period where many people travel into the country to spend the Christmas and New Year festivities with friends and family. As a result of that, bus stations get overcrowded. Colette Loom visited some of these bus stations, finding out their level of readiness in order to safeguard travelers. Her report. This another time of the year with most persons running heter skater to get done commitment engaged in at the beginning of the year. Many have been flying in the country to spend the Christmas and New Year season with friends and families. And they will be plying the roads to other regions of the country to see their loved ones. In all this, there will be congestion at bus stops as it has always been the case during this rush season. The issue as take is when passengers ply these roads how safe are they? Visiting some bus stations in Douala, most passengers who spoke away from camera for fear of not letting others finding out they are traveling said the prey before traveling, leaving their homes on time with all necessary requirements to the agency that will enable them get some comfort on the way, especially to places like the Northwest region where they experience a lot of inconveniences and insecurities on their way. Speaking to some workers of the transport sector, they say they are ready to safeguard the lives of passengers in every way they can in order to curb road accidents. We have, we have qualified drivers and we have more than one driver, one bus. When uh, one driver will bring that bus to go in Juana, another driver have to take back the bus to Pamela. Or if it's the one going back, we have a place where you can rest for some hours before going back. As safety of passengers is a priority to bus agencies, these workers in another agency say they are set. There are a lot of safety measures who are put in place this festive period to ensure the safety of passengers. For instance, if a driver leaves from Bamenda to here in Buala, if the vehicle has to go back to Bamenda that very day, it is not the same driver that will take the vehicle to Bamenda that very day or that will take the vehicle on the journey that very day. Then he ensures that the vehicle is being checked immediately as it arrives. It is being checked whether um, there are any 
any faults to it, if there are any faults to it, we make sure that the, the faults are being treated before it embarks on the journey. We equally ensure that the driver rests enough before he embarks on a journey. Then we equally uh, avoid overloading because when there is overloading in a vehicle, it can lead to accident. If the vehicle is to contain 70 passengers, obviously you will see 70 passengers on board. On aspects of inconveniences on the way, we don't encourage laziness here. Social food stores that are being uh, rejected from being eaten in the vehicle. The vehicle takes up up at 9 a.m. In the evening or at night, it takes up at 9 p.m. Life is lived once. Thoughts. Everyone needs to take great care as they embark on different journeys in all areas in the country so as to save lives. In more featured stories today on the news, transforming trash to wealth has helped in reducing the amount of plastics around the city of Boya. In the following report, staff lady Emanuela C. visits an eco brick factory and compiles the report that comes up next. According to environmentalists, there will be more plastics than fish in 2030 if our waste is not well managed. Ngale Matute Samuel is into plastic recycling. He uses plastics to make bricks. At a time when plastic bottles are littering all over the place, we paid a visit to his small factory, taking us through the process of making these eco bricks. Ngale Matute says it is time for Cameroonians to make wealth from the waste, but this comes with challenges. But again, what I actually saw is one can actually make waste from wealth, trash from treasure. Number one, wood is very expensive <clears throat> before you want to get wood and um, trust me, you must spend a lot of amounts to get wood before the plastic gets melted. It takes a long duration, a little, so it needs pressure. So in the process of getting the duration, there needs to be extremely heat on that. So that is where another thing we have the challenges, the firewoods. Transforming these plastic bottles into eco bricks by melting, mixing and molding, Ngale adds that the roads of Cameroon need these bricks. I'm so passionate about the development of our roads. One of the major things that brought me into recycling is about the development of the roads. We can use this one to tar our roads as much as we can. So the plastics is literally our cements, our water and everything we could use. With the thousands of plastics littering the streets, one will say at least this is a way forward for a plastic free world. Thank you, Emanuela C. Now we stay in the southwest region where sons and daughters of the four villages that make up the Wovia clan have been called upon to shun hatred and other vices and embrace love and peace for development of the clan. The call was made by a college of clergy during the opening ceremony of the fit fourth edition of the Wovia Cultural Festival, which took place recently in Limbe. Kuma Honore reports. Miss Magdalene Vetomi is the winner of the midden edition of Miss Wovia Clan Beauty Contest. She emerged victorious after distinguishing herself on the podium of Miss Wovia Clan Beauty Contest, which saw the participation of 10 contestants. She won the crown alongside Miss Rosaline Lonja Efufa and Miss Tracy Evosi Buanga as the first and second runners up, respectively. The winners were privileged to be decorated by the four traditional rulers of the villages of Wovia clan. History have it that Wovia village is the gateway of Christianity to Cameroon, reason why every first Sunday of the year the people of Wovia gather at the beach to pray and thank God for a new year. It is also for this same reason why the indigents of the Wovia clan decided to kickstart activities of the fourth edition of their cultural festival with an ecumenical service. Prior to the ecumenical service, the villagers embarked on a peace and unity walk from Mokidim Market to the explanet of the Wovia village community hall where the ecumenical service took place. Drawing inspiration from St. Paul's letters to the Ephesians, Reverend Dr. Ekuka Mulindo, who doubles as the traditional ruler of Mondoli village, captioned his sermon, The Turning Point. He called on the villagers to humble themselves and turn to God to show his mercy and shine his face on them. He regretted the fact that 
For more than a decade, the villagers of Botalan continue to nurse hatred among themselves instead of looking at themselves as a people with a common heritage. That, uh, Victoria or Libya was founded on godliness and peace and love and unity. And the Wobia clan happened to be the gateway of Christianity into Cameroon. And we should start from here to worship God in spirit and in truth. And this will also continue in other parts of Cameroon so that peace and love and unity should reign in our beloved country, Cameroon. They must start from the Wobia clan. Celebrating on the theme, uniting the Wovia clan through culture. The opening ceremony saw the participation of the four chiefs of the villages that make up the Wovia clan with Botalan village, Wovia village, Mondali village and Dame village inclusive. This is the by just that if you look at the Wovia clan, you know there's no indigenous populated uh, villages in the, the whole of the Limbe compared to the Wovia clan. So we are not seizing, we are just telling the Limbe people that Wovia is back, is fit. We are not seizing. The ecumenical service was characterized with songs of praises and thanksgiving, thanking God to have ushered them to this period of the year so far. The clergy equally prayed for peace, love and unity to reign among the different villages and for guardians and protection upon the lives of the villagers. On to something else, the National Commission of Human Rights has mobilized a 16-day activism and awareness of gender-based violence in Betwa, its region of Cameroon. The ceremony, which was part of activities to mark the 75th edition of Human Rights Day, registered the presence of the governor of the East region, Grigra Mvogo, and other human rights activists in the area. Details with Catherine Kongwe. Let us join to end gender-based violence is the theme of this year's 75th edition of the International Human Rights Day. The ceremony which took place in Betwa East Region of Cameroon saw the presence of the Governor of the East Region, Gwingwa Vongo, the representative of the Cameroon Human Rights Commission and other human rights activists in the area. To end uh, gender-based violence, um, and we as the Commission, uh, Cameroon Human Rights Commission, it is our business to ensure that the right abuse that goes with gender-based violence must continue. So we are joining forces with other state institutions and partners to celebrate this day calling on everybody from the local level to the state level who are defenders and who are perpetrators of gender-based violence to stop. Given that women and girls suffer from every area of violence, the human rights activists added that there is need for them to know their rights. Basically, you know that in gender-based violence, it is violation of rights, right to life, right to dignity of living, right to food, right to employment, right to education, right to ownership of property. And we know that women and girls suffer this illness in every sector, in every area of Cameroon. And therefore, it is very costly in, in terms of development, very costly, because you are actually uh, condemning or uh, underutilizing a, a good proportion of your human resources. Meantime, the representative of the Cameroon Commission of Human Rights called on the public and the forces of law and order to eradicate the phenomenon in the East region in particular and Cameroon in general. Let's now talk health. Since the last measles outbreak in 2019, Accounting for more than 364 measles cases in the first three months of the year, the World Health Organization warns of another major outbreak in Africa as cases are reportedly on the rise. Details in this report with Bokengo Wavi Kemia. Measles is a highly contagious disease bearing mild to severe symptoms, burning, 
health complications like meningitis, brain damage, blindness and more and is prevalent in children under the age of 5 and adults older than 20. Measles is a highly contagious disease caused by the measles virus. It is easily spread through the air by an infected person coughing or sneezing and symptoms typically include fever and rash. Complications of measles infection are common and can range from mild ones such as diarrhea to extremely serious ones like pneumonia and brain inflammation. According to the World Health Organization, there is a surge of new cases in Africa and experts have blamed the surge to a drop of people being vaccinated against the disease. The interventions that we put in place for the COVID-19 pandemic, such as mask wearing, teleworking and travel restrictions also slowed the transmission of other respiratory diseases, including measles. And as those restrictions are being eased, we are seeing an increase in the number of measles cases being reported, particularly in Africa. Lane emphasis, the World Health Organization measles and rubella experts say. We had the largest outbreaks of measles that we've seen in two decades in 2019. In order to prevent a repeat of 2019, we need to make sure that those that have missed their measles vaccine get vaccinated. The best protection against measles is being vaccinated. The measles vaccine is safe and effective, and since its introduction, billions of doses have been given globally, preventing serious illness and death. It should be borne in mind that measles is more than just a rash on one's skin, and vaccination is key to preventing and combating the disease. You are welcome back. In news out of Cameroon, over 80,000 Somalis arrived Kenya in the past two years fleeing conflict and drought, which has gripped the Horn of Africa region. Details on this story and more striking African stories today in this report that comes up next. Begin our tour of the African continent today in Uganda, where the country has received a shipment of Ebola vaccine candidates to be used in the clinical trial. Health Minister Jane Ruth Asheng and the World Health Organization Uganda Incident Manager attended a ceremony to receive the doses on Thursday, December 8, 2022. Even though the outbreak is seemingly warning, with no new cases reported recently, Minister Asheng remained cautious. First of all, we are nine days today, countdown. So it does not mean we will not get another case. Uganda is a country that always wants to be prepared and ready whenever any outbreak occurs. However, according to the World Health Organization criteria, an Ebola outbreak ends where there are no new cases for 42 consecutive days. Note that there are currently no licensed vaccines for the Sudan strain of the virus. And since the outbreak was declared on September 20, 2022, 56 people have died of the epidemic and 142 cases recorded. Over in Somalia, Tens of thousands of Somalis are crossing over into Kenya in search of water and food for their families as drought grips the Horn of African region. According to the United Nations Refugee Agency, over 80,000 Somalis have arrived in Kenya in the past two years, fleeing a complex mix of conflict and drought. Somali families escaping drought at home continue to cross the border into neighboring Kenya as the Horn of Africa region faces its worst drought in 40 years. For the record, Nearly 1 million people are displaced in Somalia and more than 50,000 Somali refugees who have arrived in recent years are in their need of support. Away from drought in Somalia, the WHO's new report claims that the coronavirus pandemic interrupted efforts to control malaria resulting in 63,000 additional deaths and 13 million more infections globally over two years. The report published on Thursday, December 8, 2022 adds that cases of the disease went up in 2020 and continued to climb in 2021, although at a slower pace. Note here that among the new challenges is a new invasive mosquito species resistant to many pesticides, but the greatest hurdle remains funding. Africa remains the continent most affected by malaria, and according to the UN, last year there were 619,000 deaths from malaria and an estimated 247 million infections, 97% of which occurred in Africa. 
In sports news, Croatia has defeated Brazil four goals against two after post-match penalty shootout. Croatia has therefore qualified for the semi-finals of the ongoing FIFA World Cup. Meanwhile, Spain's head coach has been sacked by the